So what do I think about this Scorpio? Well, here's the boot, and uh, there's a tremendous amount of space in the boot of itself, but of course you can also, should you require it, drop down the backs of the rear seats, and then you've got a real cavern. You could actually throw a party in there, I'm sure. But even so, without doing that, there is an enormous amount of space in the back and lots of legroom for the passengers. And then there's the driving position. Well, that's absolutely crucial. A fella either likes or doesn't like a car, depending on how comfortable he is in it, given that all other things are equal. And uh, this is amazing because it is actually tailor-made for you. You just build it round yourself. And then there's the steering wheel. Now, people tell me that I drive very close to the steering wheel, but then that's the way I like it. And here, having adjusted the seat, I can move the steering wheel up, down, and I can bring it out and push it back again. So all in all, given the seat and the steering wheel, you've got total flexibility for the sort of position you want. Well, if I haven't packed it now, then it's too late. Have okay. a good journey. Thanks a lot. See you on Tuesday. Bye. Bye now. God bless. There's no doubt about it that the best place to start driving a strange new car is in surroundings you're familiar with, and this is my, my patch, really. This is where I live, in the Thames Valley. Isn't this a lovely stretch of river on my right here? And I'm going up to Bolter's Inn. This is one of the great traditional places. You've heard of Bolter's Lock. It's the busiest lock on the Thames. Very famous lock, indeed. The marvellous Edwardian prints of how it used to be, and it's still very, very busy indeed. I thought I'd just pop in here and park the car, have a look at it, and have a coffee with an old mate of mine. Arriving at Scotland at this time of the year, of course, you never quite know what to expect. So when I was handed a 4x4, four four, it sort of is a car for all seasons. If for any reason snow were to arrive, you would feel confident that you would get almost anywhere with a 4x4. Four four. The car, of course, I like very much from the point of view, although it's a very spacious car, I don't find myself sitting in a large car by feel. I think I'm in a car that can be driven easily without any effort, without feeling that I'm surrounded by a lot of metal. Uh, we have a uh, Scorpio at home in Switzerland that Helen drives quite a lot, and she just gets into it and drives it like it's a very small car. Edinburgh, of course, for me, uh, is a particularly beautiful city. Of course, selfishly, I think, uh, as a Scot, that it might be one of the prettiest cities in the whole world. It's a it's almost as if you're not in a city at all. It's got a rural feel about it in many ways. The castle, of course, is dominant. It looks over everything. And if we drive up towards the castle now, as I am, and you drive through some of these tiny wee lanes, again, it's important for me to be able to judge the width of my car and the length of my car accurately. Uh, and there's not much room for, for anyone to get through here, never mind a car that has the capacity uh, for people and baggage, etc., the way the Scorpio has. So, really, for me, the car is totally flexible. The University City of Oxford, fine old place, and a real test, by the way, of a motor car, particularly 
an automatic. Have you ever had an automatic where you lurch forward constantly when you're in traffic? Well, lots of opportunity to try it out here. This is the high, lots of traffic, slow moving. It's not lurching, it's going very well indeed. Smoothly running at low speeds. And that's the test of a good car, a big car. Does it run well, slowly? And this one does. This is a big car. Funny, really, because from the outside, it doesn't appear so. Once you get inside, it does and is very spacious indeed. And yet it doesn't drive like a big bus. That's for sure. It drives neatly and easily. And it moves forward slowly very well and turns very tightly indeed. No question of that. I thought I knew this city, but of course, in the many years since I've been here, times have changed, a lot more traffic about. And in an attempt to keep the center, the university part of the city, clear of traffic, they've put in a lot of one-way systems to deter you from using old streets as throughways. And very often I came up against a barrier at the end of the street and had to turn in a very confined space. The lock surprised me. It really was very good. You get a very tight turning circle on this big car. Scorpio is very good for that. Now, somewhere down here in this maze of tiny, tiny streets is my old college, Merton College. Fine old college, the oldest in the university, proudly the oldest. Here it is, Merton College. So many happy days here, three idyllic years. I'm not quite as old as uh, 1264, but I've been working out rather depressingly today that it's 35 years. No, it can't be 35 years since I came here. 19? Well, I suppose it was. I suppose I did pass 19 once. Did go that way, I suppose. The other thing I discovered in the tight turns is the advantage of this variable power steering, because when you're moving slowly and turning slowly, that's when you need power steering, and that's when it works very well here. In other words, it aids you and helps you a lot more when you're driving slowly and turning tightly, as I've been doing all day in this famous old city. Very much indeed. I've been driving around Scotland here, and suddenly I find myself in Kincardine. In fact, it only, probably only two or three weeks ago, I was here. In fact, just over there at the police college. I think one of the most impressive things for me is the fact that all of the Scorpios are fitted as standard equipment with the ABS. I mean, the, the fact that they say by 1990, I think, that one out of every three cars are going to have ABS. That surely must be an advantage, not necessarily on the basis of stopping distance, but I mean, the avoidance factor. You, you're going to see the benefits of that in, in, in accidents, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah, it's definitely. It's a good alternative. If something's going to go wrong in an emergency situation, the, the fact that somebody's got an additional stopping assistance available to them, it, it's, it must be. But even with your training here, and I mean, you're talking about experts that are clearly above what you would expect as normal road drivers. Even with their knowledge of all the driving your policemen do when they come here for training, even in an emergency with that insight, they still make mistakes, don't they? They still hang on the brakes and turn the steering wheel? I mean, I know from my own point of view there have been times where even the amount of experience I've had where I've just locked the brakes up. A shock, a pedestrian runs out, a child on a bicycle or something, and bang, on goes the brakes. And of course they do lock up. It's amazing how few people know that if you turn the steering wheel, even in that emergency movement, as long as those wheels are locked, the car will not change the direction. The, the trajectory of the car will keep going straight on. And, and I said that even with me and all the miles that I've driven and all the emergencies I've faced on a track, I still catch myself overriding that so-called knowledge. Now, ABS obviously overrides me. It's a panic situation that comes in, and just having the ability to get out of the situation is obviously a lot better for them provided that the brain tells the hands, yeah. tells the feet in coordination to do the job for them. And of course we've got that with EBS. I, I mean, I really think, for me, it's almost the greatest contribution, I suppose, since the windscreen wiper, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, to making motoring safer. This system overrides that. Gosh, what an advantage, eh? If people read up on EBS and realise that a similar type of system is fitted in aircraft, and when they come in to land in an aircraft on a rainy, a very wet day, 
and that lad, the pilot's able to pull the aircraft back up. Did they ever wonder how they, they slide off or don't slide off? Yeah. He's pulling it up with a system that can stop the car. And the car's doing exactly the same thing here. I think that, you know, I've never had them in a racing car, but I've often said if I were going to go back to racing, for wet weather racing, I wouldn't mind having a very sophisticated ABS system in because I think in certain circumstances it's certainly going to be better than I am. And I think that's what we've found with the Scorpio. I think Ford have done a fantastic service. I've lived near the Cotswolds for, oh, I think about 25 years or so, just about the length of time I've been in the southeast. And it is for me the most English part of England wonderful place indeed the access of course is now marvelous with big motorways and, and major roads and this has given me an opportunity getting there of uh, discovering what's on this motor car it has as cliff morgan once said got hot and cold running maids in other words just about everything let's start with the air conditioning i discovered air conditioning only about two three years ago and i thought well this will be nice when we go down to the south of france and it was but what i discovered was that there are more sticky days in the average English summer than you'd ever believe, and I discovered it's a tremendous boon in this country. And I will never now buy a car again without air conditioning, an absolute must. We're also great musicians, at least my wife is. Welsh wife, well, they all are, aren't they? And the sound system in here is fantastic. I said, what a fine four-speaker sound system. And somebody said, no, no, you got it wrong. It's a six-speaker sound system. Fine, I said, must have been made by the Japanese. No, they said it's not. And to my utter astonishment, it's made and marketed by the Ford Motor Company. It's a terrific piece of electronic engineering. The sound just whistles around the car and is clear and beautiful. Just look at this road and look at these villages. Didn't I say this was more English than England in a way? I'm not going to tell you where this valley is. I've discovered it and you can find it for yourself. Suffice it to say, it's a tiny road strung with a pearl of little Cotswold villages. Thatch roofs, old gardens, little trout streams, very, very quiet, and it runs for about 50.
Driving in country lanes. I'm driving now, it just feels right at home. Of course, this particular car's well balanced. There's 65% of the drive to the rear wheels and 35% in the front, which means that the car's very well balanced. It, it really handles very well on perfectly dry surfaces, as well as, of course, the rain. And then, of course, if it does get slippery with snow or ice, then you've got the, the really perfect solution. Jackie, how are you? Well, Frank, welcome to Glen Eagles, Geoff. You've made great time. Nice to see you. Well... Nice little pad you got here. Shh, don't tell the tax man. <laughs> Do you think we've got time for a little hit of the wee ball and a shoot before? A wee dram of the wine of the country first. Come on, then. OK. After you. The Scorpio, for me, is just ideal. Here I am at a five-star hotel, great luxury, but so is my car. It has great luxury and great style. It goes hand in hand. For me, this is simply the best car for Jackie Stewart to have. Well, I've given it a pretty fair trial. I've driven it slowly in country lanes and on the motorways, and it is a joy to drive. There's no question about that. Very comfortable at slow and fast speeds. Frankly, I've been trying to think of something that isn't on this car, and I can't think of anything. It is so well equipped, it's absolutely unbeatable. It's a very, very good car, and I tell you something, I'm far too old to say something I don't mean.